Look, I'm gonna go normal expert. So I have uh, played this game before. Have gotten pretty far, in fact. But got stuck in a spot where... Uh, <coughs> that was a really difficult fight. I'll continue after this cinematic. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos' final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos' ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Hey, Barbie. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos' minions. Tunan brings Kairos' laws to newly conquered lands, aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos' armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? If you're up for some multiplayer games later, Barbie, uh, let me know. Or do I? My net has been lossy again today, so that's good. <coughs> okay, so yeah, I have played this game before. Uh, got pretty far, but got stuck on a a fight that was Is this just height or is there more to it? I'm gonna be this chunky boy Fail as shit <clears throat> See I had that one fight I got stuck on because I decided to Kinda Remake my character, not remake but like transform my character into a completely different role And wasn't finished with him, so he was kind of a weak dumbass. No voice for me, thank you. This face looks confused enough to be mine. <coughs> yes, I love this game, man. Not entirely sure what kind of character I want to play, but I think I'm gonna try for some ranged um, assassin type. What is this? Heroes of the Storm? I mean, I gotta be a low breaker, right? <coughs> also, um, backseat gaming is absolutely allowed, but you know, in a nice and friendly way.
short bow is where it's at. <coughs> this time, anyway. Hard shot. And yeah, I'm gonna take it slow. I'm gonna try to be smart about it, even though I'm only playing on normal difficulty. Oh, these are both actually pretty good, but I'm gonna go for hard shot. Back under expertise. Imagine having a big old war mace next to your short bow. So I could just go all in all in on the short bow. Is that dumb? Because this <coughs> I mean there's going to be other people with me at all times, so maybe it's not that dumb. Do you want purple magic or blue magic? Or more blue magic or yellow magic? JK. It's gonna be a short one. Although I do like the war maze. Entitled streamer alert. Let's read that for me. Alright, let's find the hammer and sickle. Has to be in here somewhere. I mean, this, this is good enough. <laughs> Isn't there something that resembles a hammer and sickle? I want to understand this. Hmm. <coughs> you play Stellaris for Hammer and Sickle. Alright. I'm gonna go with this. I don't actually know what this is, but I like it. It. Enter name. Well, let, let's come up with a brand new name that we have never used before. <coughs> All right, bits. Well, let's be realistic. <laughs> Can't go any lower, huh? All right, I guess I made a realistic character. <laughs> So smart. Alright, let's be normal. Let's be smart about this. Accuracy is good. So, what's the deal with this, I wonder? Is it like... Does this affect... Um, ranged attacks? Is this a dumbass build? I, I don't really know. I'm just gonna go with this. Oh boy. Okay, bows. Like a bows. Oh, this goes from the same pool, huh? 
Alright, hold up then. Hold the heck up. I, I absolutely want to pump points into that. Let's let's make it somewhat balanced, huh? <clears throat> I can make it sixty nine, sixty nine, and I shouldn't make it forty two, forty two. Because I'm an idiot and numbers, yeah. Numbers are just for aesthetics for me. Oh, we're, we're absolutely doing the conquest. So we're gonna be here a while. <coughs> All the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. Okay. In the early days of 428, 420, Kairos's baby. armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment. The mountainous border that we tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late. Alright, so during the conquest, you will decide your character's actions during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Wait, is... This is not how you do... Possessive with a name. Or is it? I think it's not. Why am I... Why do I get hung up on this? Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the tears respond to you. Your decisions matter, choose wisely. <coughs> I will not choose wisely, thank you very much. I'm going to be an idiot. Oh, cool toys. The Bastard City. The Bastard City stood on the northern border between Kairos' empire and the tears. Built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms, the city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a net sorry the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos's military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos's armies. Taking this city would send a message to the rest of the tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable. Or is it? <coughs> so we can go to the gates of judgment or infiltrate the tears. Let's read up on this. History would remember the gates of judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded within Sorry, with advanced units of both armies preparing for the coming war. The Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? <clears throat> Probably... Not. Let's let's read up on this one as well. The armies of Kairos took the battle to the gates of judgment, trumpeting the opening call of the conquest of the tears. The two armies, the disfavored and the scarlet curse, brought their distinctive sense of order and chaos to the assault. You went to the battle alongside the army whose approach best suited your strengths. 
Mm, I think I'm gonna go with this and with... Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna do this. You lent your skills to the elite disfavored scouts to capture a border garrison. Graven Ash insisted that an early victory in the offense would boost the morale of his troops and diminish the haughty overconfidence of the southerners. Yeah, we're gonna do that. The Oathbound scouts identified a modest border defense and collaborated on an organized attack that would leave the enemy uncoordinated and cut off from aid. You oversaw the preparations and offered your opinions on the strategy. When the chasing of sorry, when the clashing of swords and spears fell to silence, followed by the cheering of disfavored scouts, you were the least surprised. Oh, I need to wear glasses, maybe. Okay. Containing the fire. Your fiercest opponents in the bastard city were the mages of the school of wild wrath. Too barbaric to use their power responsibly, the unbridled practitioners needed to be stopped. How did you trick the hot-tempered mages into their own undoing? That sounds good, but let's read this one as well. <clears throat> With the border garrison captured by your disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos' armies and lurked in the shadows of the bastard city. You decided that com converting one of the locals to Kairos' side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. I know that would be <coughs> that this would be more in line with how I chose the backstory for my character, but I like this more. <coughs> I'm, hmm. <coughs> I I'm trying to choose options here or paths that kind of line up with what I would imagine I would do if I was in a situation like this and have not died on the first encounter. <clears throat> the mages took their more dangerous research, out research outside of the bastard city walls. You sent a scout to sabotage a delicate ritual which caused an explosion that injured or killed many senior practitioners. Enraged, the survivors expended themselves on a chase through the surrounding hills, but a disfavor surrounded them and brought them to the hill. Brought them to hill, I should say. Um, the few that survived the attack were wait what? The few that survived the attack were conscripted by the Scarlet Chorus. The few that survived the attack, right? That's that's what it meant to me. <coughs> Your tactics of infiltration placed you in the bastard city out of the main armies. Your work softened the city defenses for the arrival of Kairos' forces, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your eyes a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the bastard city? <coughs> Minus 100 accuracy. No. Minus 50% damage. What is that incoming damage? <coughs> <coughs> But your damage is significantly reduced. Well, I'm gonna go with this one. Especially it's because it's more in line with how I imagine things. Some deaths were quiet and unnoticed, while others were gruesome beyond words. As a wave of murder overtook the city's elite, your deeds swelled in infamy. Well before the armies arrived, no one in the bastard city felt safe in their homes, much less behind their walls. By the time Kairos' forces crested the horizon, the city was fearful enough to throw open the gates and welcome their new protectors. Wow. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. Which I guess is the only way you can be in this game. Oh, Apex Legends, cool, I know that game. 
The bastard city settled into a new state of normalcy, with every tower displaying Karas' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of decorated carrier to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Dunan sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Karas' conquest, either as a judge and overseer of the settlement of Leten's Crossing, or as a war advisor with the armies advancing to the realm of Apex Legends. <clears throat> well, this... You know, being an overseer <laughs> sounds more my speed. Lethian's crossing. Or Lat Latian? Latin? Latian, I guess. Latian's crossing. Deposits of iron made the settlement of Latian's crossing a strategic war set. Kyrus sent the forge bound, smith mages of exceptional skill to establish a flow of weaponry. Tunan the educator sent one of his fate binders to ensure the enforcement of Kyrus's law. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's us. <coughs> 420 again, nice. 420, 69. Years ago, Lethe and the Bold founded a small merchant town at the intersection of ancient old walls. A pact between the settlers and the mercenary company meant that caravans were able to travel without fear of bandits or bane, and the town thrived in modest insignificance. Lithians, oh sorry, Latians crossing drew Kairos' attention for the iron deposits in the surrounding hills. With the region under Kairos' control, the northern smith mages could set up workshops to refine ore and arm the disfavored, with the finest weapons in the known world. The Archon of Secrets dismantled the mercenary support with a generous bribe, taking the crossing in bloodless victory. Lunan dispatched you to travel alongside Karis' forces and bring order to the region. Okay. <coughs> order we shall bring then. The iron must flow. Karis' smith mages worked day and night to create weapons. No one faulted their dedication, yet production was low. The plans that came to light proved, div proved divisive to the disfavor in Scarlet Chorus. Sorry, I can't, apparently, I can't read. On one hand, any additional manpower was needed for fighters, not forges. On the other hand, the celebrated weaponry of Kairos' armies needed to be fiercely guarded. What's this one? Sirin, Archon of Song, used her arcane charm to lure locals into joining Kairos' army. As patroness of the Scarlet Chorus, her efforts were critical to the conscription of new recruits. When an intral disfavored soldier joined her cult, his company feared that the Archon was growing out of control and needed to be stopped. Hmm. Oh boy, which 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 issue would uh, would we deal with? <clears throat> that seems horrible. So here's the thing, I kind of want to go with this because we have been seemingly siding too much with the disfavored, and at least that's how I feel. <sighs> yeah, let's do this. 
The Scarlet Corps agreed to transfer Syrian's latest recruits to the front lines of the Apex campaign. Your resolution fit their uh, traditional model of conscription, so they considered it a fair alternative. In the weeks to come, more of them returned to active duty than even Syrian herself expected, likely owing to their obsessive devotion to the Archon and her enchanting music. <clears throat> A red anvil. One of Kyrus Smith's mages swore allegiance to the Scarlet Chorus, jealously hoarding the secret of iron forging. The disfavored wait what? Jealously hoarding the secret of iron forging. The disfavored demanded the Smith's immediate return. The Scarlet Chorus insisted that they were within their rights to take allegiance from any source. Tempers flared and the forges cooled as arguments stalled productivity. Hmm. Ancient threats. Drawn to the arcane energy around the forges, mystical predators from the nearby old walls began to raid Latinus Crossing at all hours. Both of Kyrus' armies reserved their strength for the front lines of the war, and yet the city required protection. You had to delegate the responsibilities somewhere. <clears throat> That's okay. Now we're leaning a bit more to the side of the Scarlet Chorus. But yeah, I don't really want to touch this one, so. This seems reasonable, right? Though the disfavored were averse to your ruling, they couldn't argue with the reasoning behind it. They rallied in the streets of Latinus Crossing, patrolling on alert in shifts that lasted day and night in an impressive show of force. They managed to repel several attacks from the predators in districts that would have otherwise suffered great harm. Able to do some good, the disfavored still detested you for keeping them from the battle that with their real enemy in the tears. Okay. Who controlled the crossing? Tragedy struck when a mercenary hired by the voices of Nerat injured a forge-bound artisan, leaving him unable to practice his craft. Dunan ordered the mercenaries to leave the city in the hands of Kairos' more responsible servants. Only a token garrison could be left behind while the armies returned to the front. As the disfavored and scarlet chorus showed increasing tension and hostility toward each other, Dunan decreed it best that only one force control the crossing. Oh boy. <clears throat> I mean, it has to be the disfavored, right? They're, they're getting the materials from there and they're protecting it now. The disfavored placed the modest garrison in the settlement of Latinus Crossing. Though the force was larger than might be needed to police the small settlement, protecting the forged-bound forged bound, Ironsmiths became the true agenda of the defense force. Sorry, I just, I'm struggling with some of these words. As these magical craftsmen kept the disfavored invasion force suited in iron. Relieved at the departure of the Scarlet Chorus, the citizens of Latinus Crossing felt they got the least of two burdens. You received word from Graven Ash thanking you for your decision. The forge bound and their weaponry could not be entrusted to the voices of Nirat. <clears throat> with, the with the mercenaries expelled and Latians crossing under new leadership, Kairos' forces congratulated themselves on bringing order to the settlement and guaranteeing a productive flow of resources. Over the course of this diversion, the army front advanced further into the tiers. Your skills were needed in the realm of Azur, Stalwart, or the Valum Citadel. Ooh. Carius's conquering gaze fell upon the Valum Citadel, its treasures, its knowledge, its secrets. Or, with its easily defended position and rich military tradition, the realm of Stalwart was the most formidable realm in the tiers. Or Azur, Kairos dispatched an Arkan of Stone to subjugate the nation of Azur. Hmm. Not a lot of info on these, huh? Hey Jake, how's it going? Oh, I love this game. I think it's fantastic. Just in the intro part still, trying to make some decisions. I definitely don't want to go to Stalwart. 
it seems like a bit out of character. It it would either have to be Valum Citadel or Azur. Let's go here. Secrets and treasures are off my alley. Oh no, it's no longer 420. The Velum Citadel was an archive and library of massive scale. Its, in its inhabitants were known as the School of Ink and Quill, a circle of mages that centuries ago carved out their own mountainous refuge on lands unsettled by the other major realms. Legend said that the citadel housed the, citadel housed the treasure trove of arcane knowledge. The overlord spi uh, sorry, <laughs> species, <laughs> the overlord spices, no, the overlord spies infiltrated the school and confirmed as much. The time was ripe to send a detachment to the Great Library Fortress and force the scholars to yield to Kairos. Syrian Archon of Song used her power to enter enemy mages who crept beyond the citadel walls. After Kairos' forces rounded up the arcane practitioners, the disfavored began executing the new captives before they could share dangerous knowledge. A crime under Kairos' law. Okay, what's the other one? Chain of Command. A detachment of Kairos' army marched on the Velum Citadel, expecting an orderly surrender. As they neared the main gates, a blast of arcane energy struck the commanders dead. Suddenly, the highest ranking officer alive, Kairos' forces looked to you for the next steps. The call weighed on your mind, as it had immediate influences on soldier losses. Hmm. We are not touching this one. Oh boy. <clears throat> we we gotta keep a balance, right? But I, I'm I'm actually not sure if I if I'm favoring the disfavored or the scarlet chorus now. I alright, let's let's take a look at this one again. Ah uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do this. The wisdom of the sages and knowledge of the Valum Citadel were too important to silence. The disfavored balked at entering the Archon service, but your ruling left them with no recourse. Archon Siren delighted in having new toys to play with and promptly enthralled her personal guard. You spotted them in camp days later following uh, in camp days later following their new mistress with wide eyed devotion. Oof. Uh, not too I don't feel too good about this one. Right of command. The Archon of Song incited Scarlet Chorus recruits to fight their leaders. Bosses were killed and su what? supplanted left and right. This the disfavored fucking hell. The disfavored demanded an end to the practice for the good of the conquest. What's the other one? The Spy Master's agents? A group of enemy mages surrendered to the disfavored, claiming to be spies loyal to the voices of Nerat. No one in the army could verify the claim. The disfavored ready to interrogate the mages, but the Scarlet Chorus protested, demanding that the prisoners be given into their custody. They couldn't risk the voices of Nerat's secrets falling into the wrong hands. This seems pretty straightforward. What are my choices on this one? I would prefer not to touch this one. We're going with this. 
The Scarlet Curse accepted the mages into their company with gratitude. After s wait, what? After secreting them within tents and out of earshot, he presumed that the discussion or interrogation followed. When asked about it the following day, the Scarlet Curse admitted that they sent the mages into the wait, the mages to voices. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take another stab at this. When asked about it the following day, the Scarlet Curse admitted that they sent the mages to the Voices of Nerat with an escort, dispatching them under cover of night without due authorization. You reprimanded the soldiers for keeping you out of the loop, but there was not else to be done in the matter. Alright. The Edict of Fire. Disgusted by your wait, what? approbation of the Scarlet Curse, the disfavored forces withdrew from the field of battle. Your small detachment now lacked the manpower to take the Valum Citadel. Do not send word that Kairos' patience had run thin. The Overlord would cast an Edict of Fire on the enemy. The parchment arrived in a slender case of engraved iron, written on it the words of a spell powerful enough to destroy the Valum Citadel. You had the choice of when to read the Edict. Reading it at sunrise would offer your enemies no warning of the devastation to come. You could also wait until sunset, giving them ample time to flee or make amends. I'm definitely choosing this one. Claiming they still had spies within the citadel, the Scarlet Chorus urged you to warn the mages of the Overlord's Edict. Granting their request, you met with the enemy under a blue flag of peace and warned them of their doom, giving the Chorus spies and the enemy a chance to run. I'm obviously doing this one. Especially after the disfavor betrayed me like that. You confronted the mages with a warning and hoped the message was received. The hour before sunset, numerous, numerous figures were spotted fleeing the citadel. As the sun dipped under the horizon, you read the words of the edict. The earth shook and red-orange light glowed in the foundation of the sprawling citadel. Bubbling up from under the library, a torrent of lava leaved, sorry, heaved with explosive force, gushing from windows and between loose bricks, melting winding trenches in the surrounding land. Days later, the flame still raged on. The conflagration continually fed and renewed by the power of the edict. Oh boy. <clears throat> I wonder if you can actually save this. The armies of Caius left the devastation of the Valum Citadel in silence. From that day forward the tears came to know the once noble citadel as the burning library. This was an undisputed loss of resources, knowledge, culture and life. But a message had been sent. The Overlord will not tolerate defiance. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. You were one of the last to depart from the mountains, and as you journeyed off, you spotted a few campfires in the mountains. They were mere specks, dwarfed by the Inferno. The last grabs of survivors or perhaps looters from Kairos' army is bored and daring enough to pick through the ashes. Oh boy, that's a whole lot of talking! My mouth is getting dry. Conquest complete. You have reached the end of Kairos' conquest. Do you want to continue or erase your progress and start over? Yeah, sure, I would love to do this again. No. I'm happy you liked it, Jake. Hope it wasn't nearly as buggy for you as it was for others. The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well, 
to crush the resistance. But months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict in any way that you can.